I don't know if he ever feeds them hornworms, but we're gonna give it a try. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here a while, it's no surprise that Grandma stole a pulchras. Like Mr. Salem here are one of my favorite tarantula species ever. They are just a velvety, beautiful, all black tarantula. Very beginner friendly if that's something you're looking for. But they're a little difficult to locate. Not as bad as when I first got into the hobby about like four, a little over four years ago. Like they're not as scarce and expensive as I feel like they were then, but they're still on the expensive side. Fortunately for me, when I had first really started collecting tarantulas, I got Salem. He was definitely among my first 10 tarantulas that I got, and I actually found him through a local person who was downsizing his collection. He was sold to me as a male. I remember I only paid $70 for him. Yeah, they could have charged me a lot, but they didn't. So we met up locally, and Salem was my first Grandma Stola Pulchra, and thus he is probably my most special. <laughs> Shortly after I got Salem, another local person was downsizing and I was lucky enough to pick up another Grandma Stola Pulchra which is this one right here who I have named Shadow and I remember it was like suspect female but unfortunately I could tell pretty quickly that this was another male. So after getting two males I decided to get a sling and try my luck and I got this little one who I've named Bella so if it's male it'll be like Bella Lugosi if it's female it'll be like Bella from Twilight. I don't know. I, I just have this like hunch that it's female for some reason. It's really weird because this sling is tiny and is already super duper black, which is awesome. But yeah, so I got them with the hopes that this would one day mature into a beautiful female tarantula, but she wouldn't be of much breeding use, I guess, for the two guys that I do have. Now, normally when I have male tarantulas, once they mature or sometimes even before they mature when they're getting close, I just give them off to somebody who has a female, which is like the standard normally if you have a male and you know, they're close to maturing or they're mature, their lifespan isn't too terribly long and you wanna find them a female to kind of pair them up and get some captive breeding going on. Always a great thing. Buying Salem and knowing he was male, I got him with the intention of breeding him someday myself. I didn't wanna do it with anybody else. So I always wanted to just outright buy a mature female. And let me tell you, not only is it a little difficult to even locate a mature female, let alone one for sale that somebody's willing to part with, but the fact that they are not cheap. Like I've seen mature Grandma Stola Pulchra females go for an upwards of four, maybe even more hundred dollars here in the United States. I'm sure it is much cheaper over in Europe. There's a huge difference in availability between here and Europe with them. The United States is much more strict getting species in and out of the country. So one of my friends was downsizing. One of my local friends here was downsizing and I heard he was trying to sell some animals to get some breeding things, projects going. And so I, you know, offered him $300 for his female pulchra. <laughs> Which $300 for a pulchra? I'm just telling you guys the price. I want you to know approximately like what they're worth. You could probably go a little higher, maybe a little lower. It really depends. Fortunately, he agreed to let her go for $300. And he also told me that he had this really beautiful Saracopelma also up for grabs for $150. Which the Saracopelma is an adult female. So that price is actually like practically a steal. I wasn't really that familiar with the species, but I went ahead and got her because I did a little bit of research and thought, what a cool species, I will take her too. So these are my Christmas slash birthday presents to myself this year. But yeah, so that is the story. That is how we got here. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at both species now. Of course, first we're gonna start off with some reptis soil. And I'm also using a tarantula cribs large terrestrial slider. Next, we are going to use some cork bark as a hide and add a little bit more decor. And she needs a water dish, so I'm using this really cute one from Tarantula Cribs. After that, I am adding a pothos. This is just a golden pothos clipping that I've had in my fish tank. Thank you. 
And for the finishing touches, I'm just adding some leaves and a little bit of moss for some coverage. So going into this, I was told that she is a very docile female, that she will tolerate some handling. So I decided to try to sneak a little bit of handling in as I rehouse her into her new enclosure. have decided to name her Elvira and I am so happy to finally have a confirmed female Gramostolo Pulcra. Of course I will keep you updated about her in Salem and if they ever become more than friends if you know what I mean. Just so you know I'm recording and that was definitely <laughs> should I put it in the video. Moving on, we will be rehousing my new Ceracopilma Santa Catalina, and as I mentioned, I am not quite as familiar with this species. In fact, I've never kept one, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get an adult female. So I'm going to be housing her pretty similarly with Reptosoil and a Tarantula Cribs. Now I was warned that she is what I call spicy, so fortunately I was prepared for the little threat pose she decided to throw, but again, she didn't put up a huge fight. She is pretty sweet, just, you know, a little spicy. There's that threat pose looking great. Goodness, so unnecessary. <laughs> So yeah, once I got her out, she just wanted, you know, to hide because she was scared and I get it, girl. Trust me, I do. Also, sorry I'm doing a voiceover for these rehousings, but I didn't want to wait until I had the time to film. I wanted to rehouse them from their temporary enclosures ASAP, so that's why you guys are getting a voiceover on these two rehousings today. I hope you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, these are my two new additions. I am so stoked to finally have an adult female Grimastola pulchra. Now, I'm not sure if she's quite ready to be bred just yet. I kind of feel like maybe she could use another molt or two, but that is absolutely fine because Salem is not mature yet. And even if he did somehow mature before her, I still have Shadow here who is like the perfect size. Like this is like what you really want to see when it comes to a breeding. Ooh. This is what you really want to see when it comes to a future breeding pair. Here's the size of the female, as you can see, and then compare that to the size of this male right here. So this is like definitely a really good future match. I think she's about the same size as Salem is right now. So you can kind of 
control the growth a little bit depending on like temperatures and feeding schedule and stuff. So what I'm gonna try to do is kind of get her to eat a little bit more and like buckle back a little bit on Salem's food intake and temperatures kind of slow him down. And hopefully, hopefully, this will be his future girlfriend. And again, if not, we have Shadow here, who is another great bachelor. Having said that, I, I am a little curious if she will eat. I haven't fed her yet. I was told that she did molt a couple weeks ago. She's eaten once since then. I don't know if he ever feeds them hornworms, but we're gonna give it a try. Yep. Oh, 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 there you go, there you go. She's got it! Awesome. I'm so glad that she's eating. This is her first time eating with me, so. Hopefully that helps her settle a little bit better. Her previous owner told me that if the floor is wet, she will pretend the floor is lava and won't touch the floor. So she is just now starting to get a little bit more comfortable because I did mist her enclosure down when I made it the other day. So yeah, that means I have four Grandma Stola Polkras and two of them are male, one of them is female, and then we have the sling, Bella. So we'll see about that. We've definitely got some time. Um, as for the Saracopilma, I actually do have a Saracopilma rebronitans that I have raised from a teeny tiny sling. So I'm really happy to own another from this genus. Now, as you saw with the rehousing, they are a little bit spicy. So is the rebronitans, but they're still really cool. And I'm super happy that my friend offered me this female. I'm gonna see if she will eat. I just rehoused her though today, so I don't know if she will. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna eat it right now. I will leave it in there though because it shouldn't cause any issues. But yeah, I really like how her enclosure turned out and I'm really interested to see how this goes. That is my new additions and I hope you guys enjoyed. Like this video if you did, subscribe if you're not, and you want to be. Don't forget I've been Instagram to use probably way too much as after that cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below and I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet pit.